Hello. So I just want to make a small little uh, lecture with some observations about uh, Aquinas's notion of uh, creation. So in demonstrating the reality of God by efficient causality, the second proof for the reality of God that we covered, that proof also establishes the fact that God is the creator of the world, the creator of creation. Since for Thomas, God is absolute and infinite, he has within himself virtually all the being and perfection of all creatures. Just as an acorn has all the virtual potentiality to become an oak tree, so God holds within his essence the to be, the potential of the being and perfection of all creatures. Now, the way in which finite beings emanate from the universal cause, Aquinas calls creation. So creation is this verb, it's not some noun, it's not a bunch of objects standing out in the world, all causally connected, waiting to be known by humans, but rather the emergence, the unfolding of the world. With respect to this issue, we should note three points right at the outset. First, Thomas's notion of creation is not intended to account for the existence of this or that particular thing, but for the totality of all that exists. Secondly, creation is the very essence of God. There's nothing, neither thing, nor movement, nor time. Um, which is apart from God. Creation, therefore, is an act which, apart from the creator himself, as to be, presupposes nothing. In other words, it's creatio ex nihilo, creation out of nothing. And thirdly, the definition creation presupposes no matter, but it does presuppose equally by definition a creative being which because it is, is itself the pure act of being, it causes finite things to come into existence. Once these three conditions are propounded, we can see that the act of creation must be for Aquinas a free act. By free act, he means that the creation of the world doesn't make God any more than he is. And it also means that if there was no creation, that wouldn't lessen God in any way. This is what he means by when he says creation is a free act. So Aquinas establishes first the possibility of creation in the following way. If we posit God as pure act, that is as the to be, not only of thought as Aristotle did, but of being itself, the three conditions requisite for true creation are realized. This to be is the production of the very existence of all that is. It is a production ex nihilo. And the cause of that production is the perfection of the divine act of being. Now the relationship between the creator and creation, uh, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas calls participation. So participation in creation that is, creation is the participation of creatures in the creator. But this immediately brings up the question of pantheism, that all things are full of God. Does this mean then that Thomas is a pantheist? Does it mean that Aquinas believes that all things are in God? No, it doesn't. In fact, far from implying any pantheistic signification, to say that creation means participation of creatures in the creator, that expression, on the contrary, aims at removing all pantheistic elements. Participation means, for St. Thomas, the bond uniting the creature with the creator. All things come to be because they participate in the pure act of being, which is the essence of God but it also expresses the separation between creatures and the creator, for the two can never intermingle. 
to participate in the pure act or in the perfection of God is to possess a perfection which was pre-existent in God, but it is not to be a part of that which it participates in. In other words, to participate in the pure act or in the perfection of God as to be is to derive and receive being from God. But the re to receive being from God does not mean that the receiver is God. Rather, to receive that creature, to receive something, presupposes a separation. As I receive a gift, that doesn't mean I am the gift or I am the giver of the gift. So, to say that creatures receive being from God is the best proof that the receiver, that is the creature, is not God. So he uses that as an argument against anyone who would claim that he was a pantheist. So because of this, Aquinas says that there's no real relation between God and things, but only between things and God. The world comes into being without any change happening in the divine essence. The universe did not come out of God by a sort of natural necessity. God is not God because he created the world. Rather, all the effects of God are pre-existent in him. All the effects of God are pre-existent in him in a sense that God is the infinite intelligence and will. Thus, all the effects are pre-existent in him according to an intelligible mode of being. God knows, therefore, all his effects before producing them. God produces creatures because he knows and wills them. The simple sight of the world and finality reigning in the world is sufficient to show that it's not blind nature which produces things by a sort of necessity, but an intelligent providence which freely chose its works. So God is the cause of all things, the primary cause of all things, but he's an infinite and immutable cause which existed from all eternity. So creation takes on a hierarchical form. We have God at the top of the pyramid as the creator. And all the creatures that emanate from God are emanating from God because they participate in the to be of his divine essence. So at the top of this pyramid is the creator. And then we have the angels as a emanation of his divine essence. And then the human kingdom, the plant kingdom, the inorganic kingdom, and then even demons, all creator, all creatures emanating. So even the demonic creatures are what they are because they participate negatively, but participate in the divine creation. So those are just some observations about creation and the world for Aquinas. Next, we'll turn to his notion of man.